Today, I'm going to be addressing the question of what does a book writing coach do? Um, which is a really good question. <laughs> I did not know uh, until, well, maybe even until I became one, I didn't really know what the official term for one was. And I had even hired one before, but she didn't refer to herself that way. So I didn't know that's what she was doing. It's become more, the term has become one that's more commonly used. Um, so I think more people know it now, but just in case I thought it would be helpful to have a conversation about what it is, what is book coaching and what's the difference between coaching and teaching. Book writing coaching is all about the goals. The primary goal is to finish your book. Um, the work isn't done until your book is done. Work isn't finished until you are finished writing your book. How many more ways can I think of to say the same thing? <laughs> uh, when, when I coach people, they finish their books. Like that just that happens because that's why we're doing it. It would be like if you, you know, were coaching someone to run a marathon and they didn't run the marathon, you would not consider it a successful relationship. This is different than every writing class I ever took, even the ones that were about book writing. Um, even in those, the goal never seemed to be to finish a draft. And no one in these classes I took ever seemed to finish a draft. It wasn't expected. It wasn't part of the, it wasn't part of the promise. So coaching is different in that way. The goal is to finish the draft. And while that is the goal, that's not the only goal. Okay. There are other goals as well, specifically to write well. So to finish your draft and, and for it to be a good draft. Um, the second uh, additional goal is to refine your process, to improve your writing process. And the third is to grow as a writer in general. And I'm going to talk today about each of these. But before I do, what is coaching? Like, what does it actually look like, right? Like, what, what happens in a coaching relationship? Most commonly, it's regular meetings, one on one, or in a small group. I love group coaching and I offer it as part of my course, the 12 week book draft. I think it's great for all kinds of reasons. We meet every week as a small group. Um, you can learn from other writers, you can help and support each other, and you can do that without losing the intimacy of working really, really closely with a coach and asking all the same questions you would in a one-on-one -on -one relationship. It's also because it's in a small group, much more affordable. It's about 20% the cost of most one-on-one -on -one coaching. So that's what it looks like. Regular meetings, in my case, the way I work with people, those meetings are weekly. All right, let's talk about these additional goals. So big goal is to finish your book. But in addition to that, there are some other goals with coaching. The first is to work on craft. A good book coach works on craft with you and teaches you by that. I mean, teaches you how to write better. So here's some examples of questions that have come up in my group coaching calls. How do we get rid of, how do we get rid of the saggy middle? You know, the saggy middle portion of a draft. She actually used that term saggy middle. And I loved, I loved it. So now I use it all the time. How do I work more tension into my scenes? How can this beginning be stronger? Where do I start and end a scene? How should I think about chapters when I'm writing a first draft? How do I weave in backstory? How do I balance multiple points of view? How do I write an effective character description? Okay, I just plucked a handful of questions that have come up, but these are all questions I would categorize as craft questions. They're about how to make your book better, how to write well. And this is very much a part of coaching, at least the way that I do it. Another thing a good book coach will do will work with you on process. Process as in helping you actually finish and not be utterly miserable while doing it, not feel like you are in the midst of a hurricane or, you know, just constantly experiencing chaos. So works on process. Let me give you an example of how this comes up in my group coaching calls. I again, plucked a few questions that have come up just to give you a sense of what this looks like. Where do I put ideas I'm having for future scenes? 
So literally he meant, where do I put them? Do I write them in the same notebook where I'm writing my novel? Do I put them in a different document? Do I put them in a journal? What do I do with them so that I don't lose them? Can I skip scenes and write ahead? What are the downsides of doing so? How do I generate ideas when I'm uninspired? How do you know when a draft is finished? I'm having an idea for a new project. When do I know if I should ditch the one I'm working on and start working on that one instead? How do I keep my butt in the chair? (laughs) A favorite. Okay. So that gives you a taste of the sort of process questions that come up in coaching. And these are really important ones to tackle because these are the ones that these are the questions, these process questions that are not addressed in the most traditional writing classes. These process questions are the, are the things that get in the way of you finishing. These are the reason why people I work with actually finish writing their books, especially when they haven't before, because unless you have support, to work through obstacles like this, this often, this is where the pitfalls are. This is where people, um, you know, they, they fall off the wagon and don't get back on. I don't know if that's an appropriate analogy there, but I went with it. All right. And then the, um, the third goal, um, is also involves craft. Um, it's, helping you to become a better writer overall. So not just craft choices in this particular book project, but learning craft skills that you'll carry into future projects as well. There are certain skills that you just have to learn once. And once you learn them, you never forget them. Like balancing dialogue and context and backstory. You have to learn that once for me, I draw a triangle and then you never forget it. Um, Writing an effective introduction of a character what kind of details in to include, what, what kind of details to include and what, what standard to use to decide what details to include. Choosing a point of view intentionally and using it effectively. These are the kind of skills that you learn once and you don't forget. You, you carry them with you from one project to the next. And this is, I think, the, probably the most life-changing benefit of really good coaching. So in some coaching is about finishing your book and getting better while you're doing it. As my, my fellow writing coach who I co-host craft talk book club with Nicole, she and I like to say it's about, um, getting better while having fun. Everything we do is about getting better while having fun. That's the whole point. We want to be improving, but also having fun. Otherwise, why are we doing it? In the next episode, I'll be talking about three signs that you're ready to hire a book writing coach. So be sure to check it out. Thanks for being here. 